Hey guys, welcome to the last installment on spherical geometry. Here we'll be looking at some HSC examination questions. Okay, so HSC exam questions. So a good idea here um, to pause, have a go at these questions, and then you can play it and make sure you get the right answer. Okay, question one. Kim lives in Perth, 32 degrees south, 115 degrees east. And then we've got, he wants to watch an ice hockey being played in Toronto at 80 degrees west starting at 10 p.m. on Wednesday. So what is a time? So we're looking at the question of being time difference, which is what we did last lesson. So I'm going to start by drawing a bit of a timeline. Now I know that Toronto will go on the left-hand side because it's 80 degrees west. I know that Perth will go on my right-hand side because it's 115 degrees east. Now each time, most of these questions need you to find the angular distance. Okay, that was lesson two of this uh, series. So in this case, one's east and one's west, so we're going to add those two angles together as such, which equals 195 degrees. Now because we're doing time difference, we know also that 15 degrees equals one hour. That's on our formula sheet. So in order to find out how long or the time difference between the two points, we're going to divide that by 15, and that will tell me how many hours in between I've got. And I think that will go in nice and evenly, actually. That comes out to be exactly 13 hours. So we have 13 hours between Toronto and Perth. Now, it's currently being 10 p.m. on Wednesday. So 10 p.m. Wednesday in Toronto, which means because I'm going to the right, I'm going to be adding the 13 hours. So if I add 12 hours to 10 p.m. Wednesday, that gets me 10 a.m. on Thursday. But that's 12 hours, so I need to add one more hour. So that brings me to 11 a.m. on Thursday, okay, which brings out the answer of D. Alrighty. Next multiple choice question. Maku and Makapa are the two towns on the equator. The longitude is 16 degrees east of Makua, and Makapa is 52 degrees west. East-west, okay, that means I'm going to be adding if I'm trying to find angular distance. How far apart are these two towns? So in this case, we're looking for the arc length or the distance. So I still need to find my angular distance, which in this case is 16 plus 52, because one's east, one's west, which is 68 degrees. Therefore, my formula that's on my formula sheet is a theta over 360 times 2 pi r. That's my arc length. So in this case, we've got 68 over 360 times 2 pi times the given length of 6,400 kilometers. Um, simply type that into your calculator. And then you can round your answer to the nearest, I guess, nearest uh, 100 kilometers by the looks of things. Um, we're going to chuck that in. And my answer comes out to be uh, 7595.67 kilometers. And the best answer here would be B, 7600 to the nearest, um, or yeah, nearest uh, 100 kilometers. Okay, so B. Next question. In this diagram, the Earth O represents the center, and B lies on the equator and the Greenwich meridian. So that's our zero degrees line, and that's our zero degrees line there. So that's our point of origin. What is the latitude and longitude of point A? We always like to look at the latitude first. That's our north or south. So if I follow it around to the line I get here, we're going up to A, which means we're going up 30 degrees, which means that latitude line there that A is sitting on is the line of 30 degrees north. So automatically C and D are gone. So 30 degrees north. Now my longitude line, well, we're going to the east and we're going 110 degrees. So it looks like my answer is going to be A. Okay, now as for some written questions. A bit more challenging, this question. An aircraft travels at an average speed of 913 kilometers per hour. It departs from a town in Kenya at 0 degrees 38 degrees east on Tuesday at 10 p.m. and flies east to a town in Borneo, 113 degrees east. Okay, which I guess if we're looking at um, our little timeline, which may be useful later on, we've got Kenya, which is at 38 degrees east, and Borneo which is at 113 degrees east. So obviously Borneo is east of Kenya because it's further away. So part one says, 
what is the distance? Okay, so my, my arc length theta over 360 times 2 pi r, just like we did previously. So I need to find my angular um, distance, my angle, which is going to be, now this case, they're both east. So I'm going to be doing 113 degrees, subtract 38 degrees. Um, again, making sure that if they're both um, the same, so they're both east or both west, we subtract their answer. That gives me 75 degrees. So I'm going to chuck that into my formula. 75 over 360 times 2 pi times the given length of 6400. Okay, and that means I simply need to type that into my calculator just as we did previously. And then we put our answer in. Um, now, this case I get 8377.58 dot dot dot. Um, it does say to the nearest kilometer. So 8378 kilometers is my answer for part one. Awesome. Okay, part two says, how long will the flight take? Now, it doesn't talk about the difference in time zones or the times between the two places. It's just about how, my, how long my actual flight will take. So I need to look at this number of 913 kilometers per every, for every hour. Now, in this case, I'm traveling 8,378 kilometers. So if I'm going 913 kilometers per every hour, I kind of need to figure out how many times 913 would go into 8378. That will tell me how many hours I'm going to have. So I'm going to type in the 8378 divided by 913, and I come out to be approximately 9.176 dot 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 hours. Now, if I needed hours and minutes, I could press my bubble button, but in this case it says to the nearest hour, so I'm going to put nine hours, and I'm done. Okay, last question for this bit. Um, what will be the local time in Borneo when the aircraft arrives? Okay, so looking at time difference now. So it was currently 10 p.m. in Kenya. 10 p.m. in Kenya, and it was on Tuesday. So I know that my um, flight is going to take nine hours. So what I could do is add nine hours automatically to see what time um, I'll land in Kenyan time. So if I add ten, um, nine hours to 10 p.m., well, I'm going to add 12 hours and then subtract three. In that case, it would be 10 a.m., subtract three hours, 10 to nine, nine to eight, eight to seven. That gives me 7 a.m. on Wednesday. Now that is still Kenya time, okay? So now I need to convert this to Borneo time. So we know that we had the angular distance was 75 degrees between the two places. We also know from previous questions that 15 degrees equals one hour of time difference. So if I divide that by 15, okay, we're gonna get five hours. So we know that there is five hours of time difference anyway. So if I'm going from Kenya to Borneo, I'm going to add on that five hours of time difference, which means if I add on my five hours to 7 a.m. Wednesday, 7 to 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, we get 12 p.m. on Wednesday. Okay, now what you may have done, you may have um, simply um, converted the uh, Kenya time to Borneo time to start with before you dealt with the nine hours of flying time and that's cool as well in that case you would add the five hours on the 10 p.m. and then added the nine hours or some people might add the nine and five together and simply plot on 14 hours okay doesn't really matter which way you do it um, just as long as you, um, you you do it in one of these methods that I've shown you okay pretty tough question we've got one last one to finish off on which is still pretty challenging the location of Sarong is 1 degree south 131 degrees east and the location of Darwin is 12 degrees south 131 degrees east Okay, which means they're the two that are the same. So if I'm looking for time difference, or should I say not time difference, sorry. If I'm looking for the um, arc length difference, I'll be looking at those two amounts. Okay, because we need the ones that are not on the same line, obviously. Um, however, if you're looking for time difference, there wouldn't be any because they're on the same longitude line anyway. Okay, question one. What is the difference in the latitudes of Sarong and Darwin? Okay, well, they are both south, 
So it means we're subtracting our angular um, our angles. So we get 12 take away 1, which equals 11 degrees of angular distance. Nice and easy. And they helped us in that question by actually saying the latitude, which is the first, um, first coordinate, south, south or north. Part 2 says the radius of the Earth is approximately 6,400 kilometres. One nautical mile is approximately 1.852 kilometres. Part 1, show that the great circle distance between Sarong and Darwin is approximately 1,200 kilometres. Okay, so this is a simply just an arc length question. I'm going to do 11 over 360 times 2 pi times 6400 and they've asked me for kilometers so I'm using the approximate value of, of kilometers there so now it's just a matter of typing that into my calculator and then hopefully my answer is going to be approximately what they've uh, given me there um, so my calculator was not working there um, so 11 over 360 times 2 pi it's always important to, to show you're working for this as well because it's asked you to show the answer there so I get approximately equals to 1228.71 dot 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 which is approximately equal to 1200 kilometers very important for two marks to show your line of working first of all and then I like having this answered down first before I put the 1200 kilometers but very important we actually have that 1200 kilometers there Part two says a group of tourists can travel on a yacht at an average speed of 15 knots. Now, 15 knots, that means 15 nautical miles per hour. Okay, 15 nautical miles per hour. Um, from Darwin to Sarong. They need to complete the trip in 48 hours or less. Will this be possible? using suitable calculations with appropriate units to justify your answer. Okay, so a couple of things. We, we know that we're 1,200 kilometers away from each other, okay? But because I'm using 15 knots, which is in nautical miles, and make sure you remember that nautical miles um, is different, okay, to kilometers, I need to convert. And that probably ties in this extra part there. That I wouldn't have had that if I didn't need to use it. So, one nautical mile equals 1.852 kilometers. So I'm going to need, need to, now not times, I thought I was going to have to times, we're going to need to divide it by 1.852. Okay, if I do that, 1200 divided by 1.852, we're going to get... 647.948 nautical miles. Okay, now just be careful. Um, had I times that, that wouldn't have been correct. Um, thinking about it, if one nautical mile is equal to 1.852 kilometers, the nautical miles needs to be less than the kilometers. So if I had times this by 1.852, I would have got a much bigger number and that wouldn't have worked out. So just be careful with that, that we make sure we get the right amounts there. Now, we know that we're traveling 15 nautical miles um, per hour. So if I want to find out how many hours it's going to take me, well, I'm simply going to divide this by 15. So divide that by 15, I come up with approximately equaling to 43.1965 dot 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 hours. Now, looking back to the question, it says that they need to complete this trip in 48 hours or less. Will this be possible? Well, if it's going to take me 43 hours, I would say, therefore, yes, um, as it's below the, 80, the 48 hours because it's 43.1965 hours, okay? Um, look, that's a pretty tough question. That is a pretty tough question, but hopefully you understood that. Um, look, any questions, please let me know. Email me um, or come and see me in class and, uh, and we can go through this. But there's some pretty good questions there um, and there's pretty much covers most of the types of questions that you would see in the HSC. Have a great day, folks. Uh, yeah, hopefully you're understanding it.